I'm John Law, this is Chasing Cars, and behind me are two cars separated by 20 years in terms of age, but almost nothing in terms of ethos. We've got a Mitsubishi Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition, which was made to commemorate the brand's four rally wins. And then we've got the GR Yaris, which is a homologation special, which has nowhere to race. But we're setting the rally facts aside for today's video, and today we're gonna put them back to back on the road. But this isn't about winners and losers, this is more about seeing if we can understand the GR Yaris a little bit better by looking at it through the lens of a well-revered homologation special that is the Mitsubishi Evo. So strap in and enjoy the video. So today's a pretty good day at work for us here at Chasing Cars. We've got the Mitsubishi Evo 6 Tommy Mackin edition, which is sometimes referred to as the Evo 6.5. There's a couple of special things about it, but we'll run through those in a second in the stat attack. But it's here in red, one of four colors they made the car in, and it actually listed in Australia, because this is an Australian delivered example, which there was only a hundred of, it listed in the day for $80,000 here in Australia, which is mental. They're now actually worth over a hundred grand as a collector car. So they actually outclass the GR Yaris when it comes to brand new price. And it makes it look like a bit of a bargain actually at $53,500 here in Australia. Now that the first thousand examples are sold out, we've only got the regular variant here. So not the circuit pack with the LSDs, but we'll get into that in a second. Now I'm gonna talk about the stats with the cars next to each other. And I want you to let me know which one you'd have in the comment section down below. So first off, we're gonna quickly run down the stats to get that out of the way, and they're very similar. So this 4G63 two liter turbocharged motor in the bonnet of this Mitsubishi produces 206 kilowatts and 370 newton meters, though it can be pretty easily juiced up in the aftermarket. That's hooked up to a five speed close ratio manual gearbox and the power is sent to all four wheels by a center diff and a mechanical electronically operated rear differential, which is what set this car apart back in the day. Weight is about 1280 kilos and 0 to 100 k's an hour in about 4.4 seconds, which is seriously rapid. Now, the GR Yaris packs a 1.6 litre three-cylinder engine, which is the most powerful production three-cylinder engine, and that makes 200 kilowatts and 370 newton meters, so right on par with the Evo then. It also sends power through a manual gearbox exclusively. It's a six-speed ratio gearbox though, and it sends power to all four wheels naturally, though only in the circuit pack edition do you get the limited slip differentials. This car makes do with open. Weight is 1280 kilos as well, so pretty much bang on, and 0 to 100 is a little bit slower at 5.2 seconds. So with the statistics out of the way, let's take a look at three cool things about each of these cars, starting with the Mitsubishi Evo. So under the bonnet, this Evo Tommy Mackinnon edition actually has a titanium compressor wheel, which allows the turbo to spool up a little bit faster. There are other ways to tell the TME apart from a cooking Evo 6, but the most obvious way is by the front bumper. The fog light here has been replaced with an air intake and the number plate placement has been moved to the side for better airflow and cooling. Inside, the Evo has a pretty cool rally inspired touch. It's an intercooler water sprayer, which sprays a cool jet of water onto the intercooler when the car's getting hot, say on a track day when you're 10 or 15 laps deep in Australia and gives it just a little bit more power, which is pretty neat. The GI Yaris is packing some serious stopping power with 356 millimeter front rotors clamped by four piston calipers. That makes it beefier than the much more powerful Toyota Supra. Now to the average observer, it may look like some hot boy has wrapped this roof in cheap carbon fiber wrap, but actually underneath it, there is a carbon fiber roof. It's far from being a parts bin special, but the GI Yaris uses a Yaris front platform combined with a Corolla rear platform which is a bit of an odd thing, but that's how they managed to fit the all wheel drive system in the Yaris. The rear track is also 90 millimeters wider and the only body panels that this GR shares with the regular Yaris are the doors, the front lights and the tail lights, as well as the infotainment system. So I think that's pretty cool and shows how special this GR Yaris is. Well, apart from the 20 year age gap, it's almost impossible to split these two cars on numbers alone. However, it's out on the road where they show the biggest differences between each other. And that's where we're gonna head now. Let's talk about driving the Evo 6.5 TME because it's got to be the best part of it. Apart from maybe looking at it in the garage, this thing is an absolute weapon on the road. It allows you to carry so much pace and it's pace that 
the engine is more than happy to serve up. This 4G63 has a real character to it. It's a real old school turbo. You need about 3,000 revs on before it does anything. And then really, the sweet spot is above probably five and a half, where it finds a whole nother level of kick to it, which is seriously impressive. So you've got to work the gearbox a little bit, but luckily, it's quite a pleasure because it's got really firm, firm shift feel, really bulletproof feeling to this gearbox. The five speed is the stronger in Mitsubishi world. And yeah, it's a, it's a pleasant thing to row through the gears of and, and use that turbocharger to drag you out of the corners. It's such a great drivetrain. Of course, it's all wheel drive, so you can feel it moving around underneath you in a very pleasant way. You can feel that rear diff actuating on tighter corners where you've got a little bit more slip angle. You can feel it just divvying up the power. So despite the fact that this car has no driver aids, you never feel insecure. It feels so tight down and rapid. There is a little bug bear for me, it's the steering. It's a hydraulically assisted setup, but it is pretty vague off the center. It's only when you're really starting to push hard where you start to get a feeling of grip, perhaps more through the chassis than so much the steering wheel. It is a lot slower rack than the Aris as well. So you've got a bit more steering input to put through. And then the chassis as well. When it's on, my goodness, is this car fun. It's pretty firm, it's very taut. The ride control is fantastic, actually, for standard dampers. It's really impressive. You can tell that this TME is 10 millimeters lower than a standard car, and you can tell it's been set up for, for tarmac more so than, than dirt, really. Not that most Evos are used on dirt on a regular basis, but it just pummels the ground with the tires, and it just keeps them, the contact patch on the ground at all times and it allows you to carry mental pace. Even on bumpy roads like the one we're on at the moment, you'd think that you need a little bit more softness, but actually, there's enough stroke there. It's just so well controlled that the damping's amazing. The chassis doesn't really move around until you're going quite fast either, and only when you're turning in do you get much sort of enjoyment from that chassis moving around underneath you, unless you're going really fast you do get to enjoy the power on corner exit. And that's really what this Evo is about. It's about slicing in and powering out. It's like a sledgehammer with a scalpel attached. You've got this big blunt instrument that's driving things into submission, but then the rest of the car gives you so much feel that you can use it and wield it like a sharp knife carving through meat. It's amazing. It's a lovely thing. And that engine gets me every time. It's such a fun powertrain. It's just an enjoyable car to drive. It really, really is. But let's see if the Yaris has managed to capture some of the Tommy Mackinnon magic found in this Mitsubishi Evo. Because if it can, then it may just be one of the best performance cars you can buy today. So, how does the GR Yaris stack up to the very venerable Mitsubishi Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition. Can I feel Tommy Mackinnon running through this vehicle? Yes, in short, yes I can. It's bloody fantastic. Now the engine, although it feels incredibly strong for a three cylinder engine, you can tell that the 4G63 in the Evo is just that little bit, it's quicker to spool and it just feels a little bit more powerful. Where the power band in that engine is a little further up the rev range. This car actually strives from three to six. There's not a huge amount of reason to go all the way up to the red line, but it doesn't feel like it's losing power. So on the road, you tend to drive this in three and four versus the Evo you're driving in two and three. But that's much of a muchness, really. The gearbox is also quite nice to row through. It's got slightly longer cross gates than I was expecting. It's a little notchier than maybe would be perfect, but we're really, really nitpicking here because the whole package of this car is fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about the diffs though, because this is not the circuit pack vehicle. So this has open front and rear differentials. Now, can I feel that most of the time? No, but this morning it was pretty wet out and we were driving on some pretty gnarly roads and you could feel that the Evo 6 
was perhaps just a little bit better at putting its power down, despite the fact that it has no traction control or anything like that. This car's ESP was stepping in, trying to keep up with the Evo a little bit, just because I think it just couldn't quite manage the power maybe as well as the Evo. But again, really close, and they're on different tires. So this is on pretty weak Dunlop Sportmax tires, which give this car a lower overall grip level in the Evo, which is a bit interesting. Given it's a modern car, you kind of expect it to be a bit grippier, but really, the GR Yaris moves around just that little bit more. Whether there's more rubber in the car or softer suspension is really what it comes down to, because it's a much more sort of flat-headed car to drive, I guess you'd say the suspension falls into the holes and soaks them up a little bit better than the Evo. The Evo feels firmer, it feels tauter, um, whereas this feels a little bit more livable day to day. Obviously it's a little different for the circuit pack, but certainly in the standard one, it's, um, it gives a bit more body roll sensation to the driver. Now visibility outwards is not great in the GR Yaris, as we mentioned. You've got this little letterbox here and you feel quite cocooned in, and that's no accident. It feels like a sports car in here because you've got minimal visibility to the rear three quarters. But the Evo lets you kind of take a few more prisoners in terms of spotting on the road. You can really see everything out of that glass house. But of course, that really comes down to the era we're in now with modern safety kit, so not such a big deal. What about the rest of the chassis on this car? got lovely steering. It's firm and it's meaty, but it's so direct off the center. It's got a really nice linear ratio. It doesn't surprise you with any sudden spikes. It feels, yeah, about as good as a modern steering system. I'd say putting it up there with the MX-5 wouldn't be unfair. A little bit less feel and a little bit more weight, but really, really good. And there's no buttons to press to make that any different. The only one you can press is uh, the uh, drive mode selector here, which uh, shuffles power around in the center diffs, so you can have 60-40 in normal, 70-30 in sport, and then track is full 50-50, which works best on a racetrack, I've heard at least, because I haven't actually tested this car on the track, but it allows the car to just rotate on the way in and then use all four wheels equally to power out. On the road, for me, I found myself using normal and sport mostly, because then the car doesn't require so much rotation on the way in to be enjoyable on the way out. You can actually load up the rear wheels with the throttle and drive out using the throttle, so a little bit more. So when you're driving at slower speeds, it makes more sense. When it's in track mode, it feels a bit more like the Evo, where you have to be more committed on the way in, and it's all about carrying pace. As I said in the Evo, pace for pace, I think the Evo would still get away from this car. The TME is really incredibly fast cross-country. It's a real scalpel. This car is a little bit lower in total grip levels and it just, yeah, it's interesting. You have to drive it a little bit harder though to get enjoyment out of it. Again, that's down to the layers of refinement that this car has. So do I think this is great? Absolutely, I love driving the GI Yaris. It puts a massive smile on my face. The sound, although synthesized inside, it sounds great. It sounds like a real rorty little three-cylinder. Outside, all you can hear is tire noise but inside is where the driver's gonna be. So I guess if you hate synthesized sounds, you can let me know in the comment section down below. And it does manage to capture some of that Tommy Mackinnon magic in the way it drives and just the bulletproofness, the way it feels so tough and dependable. So yeah, Yaris, absolute tick from me. Loses a little bit in terms of absolute rawness, but do you really care about that? As we'll find out in a minute, the trade-off is refinement. So let's quickly talk about the interior of the GI Yaris. Now I'm not going to talk about soft touch materials today. You can watch Tom's full in-depth review of this car that's already on the channel. What we're concerned about is the business of driving, which in my opinion, the GI Yaris actually really does get a lot right. The steering wheel is the perfect size, perfect diameter, and a really nice thing to hold. The gear stick falls to hand very easily, and all the control weighting is really well set up. I find it's very easy to rev match downshift in this car. I don't find myself using the intelligent manual shifting that it's got in here. The handbrake is also really nice and ergonomically placed. There are some issues to level at it. The visibility out the front is impacted by the small gap between this mirror and the infotainment system, which in practice isn't such a big issue most of the time, but there are some times where you really just can't see what's going ahead, so you have to sort of duck and look like a bit of a weirdo. And the other thing is the driving position. Now, 
I'm experienced in Clio 182s, which have a much worse driving position than this car. So for me, I don't actually find it an issue. Even at six foot two, I'd be able to fit in here with a helmet on without any real issues. But there are some people who this driving position will just be too high for and make them feel a little bit uncomfortable on the road. So definitely test drive them and see what suits you best. Now let's jump in the Evo and see if Mitsubishi got more of the bits right or less. Jumping inside the interior of the Evo 6, and well, it's like stepping back to the 90s in here. Jeff, the owner, has reliably informed me that this aircon panel is exclusive to Australian delivered Evo 6 Tommy Macklin editions. The rest of them actually get a digitized climate dial. So that's an interesting little factoid. Below that, we've got the most early 2000s little audio visual aftermarket system, a set of Mitsubishi gauges for turbo, temp, and your volts. And of course, because it's a 90s Japanese car, We've got an ashtray, so you can be a badass, roll down the road at intense pace and smoke a cigarette while you're doing it. So, what about the rest of the stuff that really matters for driving? The steering wheel is lovely, it's a Momo item. Please bring this back, Japanese manufacturers. I love these 90s Momo wheels that are made for the manufacturer with the airbag. Amazing stuff. Right diameter, great stuff. Gauges, very clear, simple and analog. You've got a nicely weighted gear knob here. The shift is... Perhaps not quite as precise as the GR, but that definitely has something to do with this car's age and kilometers on it. And then you've got a nicely placed handbrake and a little storage spot for your very period correct 90s point and shoot camera. So the Evo ostensibly has everything you need except for the luxuries. The real luxury in this interior are these seats. These are a Recaro item designed specifically for the Tommy Mackinac edition. You can tell that because of their embossing there and they're the most comfortable things to sit in. I've yeah, amazing seats. I really love them. And they just let you get a little bit more down to business with this car. You feel a bit more at one with this car straight away because you get that intense feedback through your bum. So as for a driver's car, it's amazing in here, but for an everyday practical driving proposition, the GI Yaris absolutely beats this car. So let's quickly check how these cars are to drive slowly on the road before we wrap this video up. We're going to talk about refinement quickly because although now at 20 years old the Evo is pretty much a collector's car for weekend days and stuff like that, funnily enough the gentleman who owns this Jeff, who's an absolute legend for letting us use this, thank you very much, this is one of four for him. This is his first one that he bought so he's got a bit of an attachment to it and he used to daily drive this car which is pretty mad to me. I mean I do get it, I'm a bit of a performance car fan myself. But um, to the average punter, this thing's pretty serious and uh, there's a lot of things about it that might make you think twice about dailying it. Most of that can be forgiven when you hit that boost and uh, run it up to the red line. But um, yeah, it's loud in here. 20 years has definitely aged the interior a little bit. You can feel plastic trims rattling. That's all kind of normal stuff, par for the course for this era. The ride, as I was mentioning in the driving section, is very firm. And that does mean that uh, when you're driving a little bit more slowly, it's a little bit fidgety, a little bit annoying. It does find more bumps than perhaps the Yaris does. In fact, it definitely does. So there's a lot of trade-off there, not to mention the MVH. You probably can see that I'm kind of yelling to speak to you guys at the moment. It's really, to me, doesn't take the shine off the Evo. I mean, back in the day, the WRX STI was the one to buy if you wanted something that you could cruise around in to the shops and still have a load of fun on the weekends. The Evo is an altogether more serious tool and it still feels like that's the case. But let's see if the Yaris can blend some of the magic of the Tommy Mackinac with a little bit more daily usability. Because if it can, then wow, got to be onto something pretty good. But for me, I'd probably put up with the annoyances of the Zevo to drive it every day just because you get to look out the back window at that wing and lay into the turbocharged torque every time you drive it. And there's not much better than that in this world. Now when it comes to living with a car, the GI Yaris does have the Evo 6 pretty much licked. It's a much more supple suspension in terms of occupant comfort it doesn't pummel the car quite so much it doesn't feel quite so taut and firm not to say it's floppy or soft it's just really well judged in my book not too firm around the suburbs with great 
back row capability. A little rolly on the track perhaps, but yeah, that's where you want the circuit pack. NVH, although loud compared to most cars, it has got nothing on that Evo 6. That thing is so loud inside. Again, that comes down to the rawness of the vehicle and, you know, horses for courses, it's what you expect. In here, it's much more comfortable. You've also got safety aids, including adaptive cruise control. You've got lane keeping and lane following assist um, and rear reversing camera to help with the visibility. Stuff that the Evo understandably lacks. But if we're comparing that sort of stuff and making a value judgment, not much fun. So really, this is gonna be a more comfortable day-to-day -day proposition, but you could have told that from before the video even started. What matters is that the Yaris, in my book, has managed to capture some of that magic that is the driving experience of a rally homologation special. So, what do we think of these two vehicles? Well, actually, we haven't talked about the looks very much, so what do you think of these cars? They're both flared to the absolute bejesus, but for me, it's the crisper proportions of the Evo that look a little bit better. But you can let me know in the comment section down below what you think. But what do we think about driving these two cars? Well, what the Evo has told us is that we're a very lucky bunch of people that in 2021, we still get the chance to buy something that is nearly as special as the Evo 6. The GR Yaris is a serious piece of kit. It's fast, it's fun, and it gives the driver pretty much everything they need to get on with the business of driving and also to have a big smile on their face. Now the Evo is arguably the more special car. It brought more technological innovations, but the beauty of the GR Yaris is almost the fact that it doesn't bring any more technological innovations. There's no hybridization or anything like that. It's a pure rally homologation special. But you can let me know what you think of the pair in the comments section down below. Would you have a non-Tommy Mackin and Evo 6 for about 50 grand, or would you have a GR Yaris? I think I know what I'd pick if I had to drive every day, but as I said, let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this style of video, let me know. And as always, please subscribe, and thank you for watching Chasing Cars. Thank you